Good Friday morning, everyone. Stuart is at home. We're trying to finalize all of the photographs and everything for my book. My deadline is on Monday. And you guys have just been so wonderful about pre-ordering. I'm not really sure what's going on, but it's number one in garden design new releases on Amazon. And it's, it's not out yet, so I guess that is attributed to you guys. And I hope it lives up to your expectations. So at any rate, this morning, Stuart is working on photographs for the book. And so I am gonna do a little front yard scan. And I am trying now to start from across the street so you can see what it looks like to passers-by. And by the way, uh, in the past two weeks, I've had so many visitors who are just from out of state and they are just stopping by en route to someplace else in hopes that they might catch a glimpse of the garden and me. And there were some people from Chicago and Marianne and Terry from Lubbock and uh, another group from Poland. So it was really fun just to, I guess, not bump into them because they came by intentionally, but it was fun to get to visit with them. And I always am nervous that the garden doesn't live up to their expectations because it is not always garden tour ready, though I like to say it's always garden tour presentable. So let me kind of um, give you an idea of what will happen. It's pretty much all green right now. And I have very intentionally let all of the boxwood get really overgrown and flouncy. And I'll check the seven day forecast to see what kind of weather we've got coming but I am going to be giving them a gentle prune. I really wanted them, let me back off again, as I've said before, to put on pretty much mass, but now it's time that they, they get a little bit more structure to them again. So I will be giving them a light, not a tight prune like the back, but a light prune. And I want to show you this one that was damaged by the storm, but it's recovering nicely. And so I will prune it up a bit, clip it into a more presentable shape. And then this brown mass that you see over here, this is the Minoan lace that has all gone to seed and I just haven't had a chance to harvest it yet. But isn't that a pretty brown? I kind of think it is. And, and so my question of the day is, do you all find it appealing, not necessarily this brown mass amidst all of this green, but are you someone that likes the browns of the garden? And when I say browns, I mean drying grasses and branches and twigs and drying seed heads, because I do and not, at, sometimes in isolation, not necessarily in in the presence of the of the bed, but I just find those tawny colors, those browns, those deep rich hues, really beautiful. And here's an example of what I mean. If you look at this crepe myrtle here, with this red foliage, look how pretty that really deep brown looks against that purple. And I think. It's just a beautiful kind of rich composition. Now, this looks kind of messy and I will be, I get to work, I'm hoping get to work in the garden next week once my book deadline is met on Monday and I'll be doing that. These purple flowers that you see, this is Verbena bonariensis and it's not presenting very well in this light, but it really is, you talk about a pollinator magnet and a self-seeder extraordinaire. Now, some people do not like it because they think it can be a little bit invasive because it goes to seed so readily. And sometimes it can be prone to spider mite. But nevertheless, that doesn't bother me in this area, which gets great air circulation. And I leave it here looking a little bit wild because from a distance it looks fine and it's a gift for the pollinators because they just love it, especially the butterflies. So this area is pretty much filled in now where I took out that rose. I've got some white crepe myrtles 
with dark purple foliage and they will come into bloom here pretty soon. And that topiary, which needs some work, that was practically bare when I brought it out of the greenhouse. It's completely filled out and it needs some trimming too. So everything needs some trimming, but nevertheless, as, as I showed you at the outset, things look from a distance, they, I, they look fine and, and they look presentable. So I'm not, I'm not anxious about getting this stuff done. And then nothing is tougher than just regular old daisies, regular old Shasta daisies. These were a gift from someone else. So if you're trying to save money, always, especially if you're starting a garden, if you're a new gardener, definitely save money by asking people for starts. Just flat out ask your friends if you can have a start of that in the spring or whenever. All of this golden fever few, that truck passes. All of this golden fever few is starting to dry now. I pulled out a lot of it, but you can see that it's starting to dry. And I do save seeds. A lot of you ask if I can share seeds, and if you if you are in this neck of the woods and you come by quite frequently, if I've got it ready, I will share it with you. But speaking of self seeders, you talk about a banner year for foxglove and i am hoping that as beautiful as it was this year next year it's going to be that much more spectacular and i'll show you some examples of that but right here is what i'm talking about all of this golden fever few will be cut back and pulled out and then you can see that i am starting to introduce some lantana in here so as it gets hotter and as the sun goes further south in the sky and I apologize my camera work is nothing compared to Stewart's but there will be a lot a lot more orange and a lot more color in this area because I think I told you that I promised you more color this year I promised myself more color this year and I am hoping to fulfill that promise so this is what I mean about the foxglove I had lots of lots of foxglove that went to seed this year and last year and you can see there are still some foxglove towering there that i have more seed to gather but look at how much foxglove i have here that will bloom next year it's incredible and it's like this everywhere you guys i've got some thinning out and some uh absolutely some tidying up in here no weeding but as I've said before, any plant that's not where you want it, you kind of consider to be a weed. So I've got lots of cleaning up in this bed. But this is why there's no weeding to do because it's so densely planted. That doesn't mean there isn't some work to be done, but I don't feel pressure to do it because there's no weeds that are setting seed or really spreading too rambunctiously. So I'm not real concerned about that. I do wanna show you these plum ewes these just were absolutely gorgeous and then they they got damaged in the arctic blast and then they recovered really really nicely and then they kind of had a a, a sad spell because they had to adjust to all of the additional light in the front yard but then we got that so they got sad and then we got a bunch of rain and now they're getting happy again <laughs> such is the life cycle of the moods, the moods of this plum yew. And some of the other things in the garden are doing the same. Everything just exploded after all of that rain. And there are some hostas that in the past really weren't that big, but they are making their presence known. And so some of them I will relocate. I've got a couple more. I still haven't done it, but I'm gonna relocate to that back window box. And in another couple of weeks, it should look fabulous. Now here is my, my little, what I consider to be my experimental area after the ice storm that suffered so much damage. I've said it over and over again and I apologize, but if you're new to this channel, you don't know that this whole area was decimated by an ice storm. And 
these foster hollies were absolutely sheared. They were beautiful and then they practically were stripped bare. And I had some pruning done on them by a tree guy that came by and we clipped off some of the really heavier branches, horizontal branches, because it had put out so much new growth and we're trying to establish, it's hard to tell here, but we're trying to establish, reestablish that really pretty conical shape. And I think we're gonna be able to do that in short order. I gave them another feed of holly tone. And with all of that rain, they're coming out and look what else is starting to bloom because we got rain and this has more sunlight now and that's these Encore Azaleas. And these are one of my just new favorites because they have done so well in this extreme cold. And now they're starting to bloom and they will rebloom this fall. Look at this one back here. It's kind of this corally pink that I like so much. And then, and I'll put just a link to Encore Azaleas below so you guys can peruse and see what all are available. I especially love the white ones, the Autumn Moonlight. And there's another bicolored coral one. So these are, are coming out. Here's an example of something else that I do sometimes. When I pull out seed heads, in this case it's chamomile, and I strip most of the seed heads and scatter most of the seed but then a lot of times there are some hangers on that just don't want to detach quite yet. And so periodically I'll take those stems and I'll just throw them down in a bare soil area that's hidden. And then whatever remains seed wise will fall in that place. And then today I'll just pick up those stems. You can see another, or there's a larkspur there kind of doing the same thing. So I'll clean those up. Here's another example of the proliferation of the foxglove. I have for years tried to get foxglove to self-seed and I've had no luck. And I would say, if you ask me for tips, I'll just say, talk to Mother Nature about that because it all has to do with weather and timing. So in terms of throwing out any seed for foxglove, I do it three times a year. I do it in the spring. I do it when seed would naturally fall in early summer and then I'll do it again in the fall and that way weather permitting I'll at least get some germination but look at all of these seedlings in fact I'm gonna have to thin them out they are everywhere and this is just one area look over here and in fact some of them even have germinated I noticed on this piece of bark and this is just one little area you guys and some of you have said well how do you know that these are foxglove seedlings well this is a skill you'll want to develop over time and that is seedling recognition and also because I knew where I had scattered these seeds I knew what to look for and so they have, when they first germinate, they've got this kind of distinctive shape and the way the first two leaves kind of hug the center. So I just recognize them versus, uh, let's see over here, looky here. If I can find it, there is, Where'd it go? It's hard for me to focus, you guys. There it is. There's a weed right there. And then there's other tiny, tiny little tree seedlings. And you can basically see there's a tree seedling. So seedling recognition is definitely a skill that you wanna develop. And it's just, and, and you can do that by paying attention to where you have scattered seeds and where they come up. So over in here, this is a completely different type of seed. And actually, I'm not sure what that is because I have not identified it. But 
There's a little hint. I'm kind of rambling today. So speaking of more fox web, look at all of this. This I had seeded in the back, actually in the potage, with the intent of transplanting them. And I'm finally getting around to working in the potage. So I dug those all up and now I will have really mature foxglove that I will plant in here. And what I now think of as my woodland garden, my woodland garden in the city. And somebody came by the other day, um, a yardman, a tree man, and they said, would you like me to remove that trunk for you, ma'am? And I said, how dare you? Absolutely not. This is what I'm talking about, the beauty of brown. It's just gorgeous. And you won't believe it, but I will show it to you later. A real treasure from this tree that got so damaged, someone made something from some of the wood and I will show that to you later. I won't even tell you about it because I, I, there's no way I could do it justice. Just, just look at the beauty of that tree and bark and the way the light falls on it. So if you have nothing else in your garden in bloom or whatever, just savor the beauty of something as magnificent as a spectacular tree trunk. So there was a, a very discombobulated, I guess, little front yard tour for you. And in the next video, Stuart will be back and I'll be actually working in front of the camera. You guys have a fabulous Friday.